So I just wanted to give you another little update. Nice to have uh, different views on these sleds, especially if you're thinking of buying one. I don't consider myself to be an expert by all means, but I have quite a bit of experience on various snowmobiles for what I'm doing. Not a high performance mountain, high speed type of guy, but if this is something down the lines of what you're doing, it might help. Anyways, uh, I read through the manual and found that you can fold these down, these mirrors, so that's kind of handy. Because I'd definitely rip these off after a while. They stick out quite a bit. So when you fold them down, they're kind of tucked away. And I never really have any, but I don't need to look behind me all that much. I, I'm always turning my head to look at the skimmer, but the odd time I'll have somebody come out with me, then, you know, I'll, I'll probably fold them out then. But uh, you can still see behind you somewhat with them in this position, because you can still adjust them, just not as wide. I removed that uh, check valve that was in here. It's just an insert that you can pull out. Some guys pointed that out to me. So it's back to the way the 2015 was. I don't know why they put that in there, but it really caused a restriction in the opening and a uh, good way to spill fuel is all it was. So yeah, it's been good so far. This box underneath the seat, because the uh, it gets so hot from the cooler on the bottom of the tunnel, it goes from hot to cold. And if you have anything that's in here, you want to make sure you open her up. I just got this flashlight here and I put that right here just to let it dry up. Because if you leave it shut all the time, you'll find that you get a lot of humidity in there. So the one thing uh, I wanted to mention is the suspension. So actually the suspension, more or less the steering. The 2015, I never had an issue. Right from the get go, I bought it. I never had to touch it. It would turn uh, whenever I needed it to. This one here, it was brutal. So as soon as I gun it, the front of the machine wanted to go up all the time and it wanted the catwalk and the track was actually staying on the ground so when i was towing with it naturally when you're you're pulling it wants to pull the back down and then the front wants to go up so as soon as you try and turn you're not, you're going straight through i'll jack it up here and i'll show you what i did so on the front you can kind of see how it's sticking closer to the uh, snowmobile itself, right? The suspension. The straps on the front are adjustable and they were at the third hole and the front of the suspension was down. So the track was more or less parallel with the sled. So now what I did is I shortened those straps on the front and I loosened off the suspension on the front and I tighten it up on the back so that this clearance stays there. I don't want it to squish down when I tie my skimmer on. And naturally, as soon as you pull on your skimmer, it's gonna to wanna to pull your back end down. And I didn't want that. I want it to hold itself up. So now by softening the suspension at the front and tightening those straps, whenever I gun it, it doesn't want to catwalk on me at all anymore. So this is what I mean with these straps here at the front. So you see all the holes? I'm at the fifth hole with this bolt here. So that brings the frame closer to the snowmobile itself, right? And then this adjustment on that shock is at the softest. And towards the back of the snowmobile, there's this adjustment here towards the back and it's a cam type, you just turn it and it uh, increases the tension on the spring here. The spring is right there. So this cams over and adjusts the tension on it. 
So I got it maxed out on the back and the softest at the front. And this made a huge difference. As soon as the back end would start to go down because of the skimmer weight, the front end always wanted to go up because this year was going down. The back end was going down and lifting the front, but the track was actually still on the ground because it was so loose on the front. So the skis were coming up and I have no steering whatsoever. So now that I shorten that up, the track can't separate from the snowmobile at the front. It's tight. So when I gun it, it it's, the pressure's all the way to the back here and it keeps the skis down. Way different, way better, especially if you're towing. But with this adjustment, it's, uh, she's all good. So you're gonna laugh at me for this one on the front. But uh, I kind of mentioned it in the other video where I was afraid of this, how this cooler here on the front is uh, sloped. And on the 2015, it was actually on top here. So there was no chances of branches going in and uh, puncturing it. But this one here is actually sloped this way. And it, the top of it actually ends right around here. So I had to put this in because I actually, like in the back, there's that other screen like this one here. And it goes all the way down here. Down right here. There's actually four puncture holes in here already from branches so i knew i do a lot of bushwhacking and uh i already got four branches through it and never hit the cooler and somebody else commented uh, as well that uh, they put some holes through it so what i did is i just got this kind of crazy carpet type of material or soft cutting board if you want i don't even know what it's from but my buddy from uh, Duluth, Minnesota actually gave that to me. So it's really tough material, very soft, pliable. Um, so I put that there so that if a branch hits it, it'll want to at least deflect it or break it before it makes it to the actual screen here. And then the snow can still get through and enough air is getting in there. But I'm gonna build a nicer one this is just for now. I had to do something. Because like I said, I do a lot of bushwhacking and uh, it was just a matter of time before I punctured the cooler itself and that would have been a sad day. So I just put this there, temporary, for now. Like I say, if a branch hits it, I don't want to deflect it. It's pretty tough material. And the top portion I'm not so worried about because the cooler kind of ends here. So if a branch is going up into it, it'd probably miss it. And I don't want to restrict too much air. And uh, so, yeah, this is not as much of an issue. The 2015 had a, I find, had a better design for not, you know, getting so many branches. And this is, it's like a magnet for branches. It seems like I, I try and watch as much as possible, but for what I'm doing, it's, uh, it's kind of hard. All right. Nothing really more I can say about it for now. I've got about uh, 400K on it now. No issues, just a few adjustments. Um, my biggest thing is that windshield. It's uh, really pain in the butt. It's not so much the glare, but the uh, distortion you get through that top portion. It's really bad, this top portion here. Like I mentioned before, you're usually looking over top of it, but when you're looking through this portion here, it's just like looking through somebody's prescription glasses and it sucks. It really, it's hard on the eyes. 
but I've said it numerous times and keep mentioning it because that's a real problem. But yeah, she's a good workhorse. She pulls pretty well similar to 2015. Not, I don't notice a whole lot of difference, really. No difference at all. The engine sounds a little different. More power? No, I don't think so. The transmission has got that reverse on the button now instead of on the, the lever. It shifts uh, smoother than the 2015 between high and low, that's for sure. But I never had an issue with the 2015. It did whatever it had to do, so right on. Uh, we're talking about this glare in the windshield. It's a bit less. I don't know. I might just be getting used to it. But anyway, here's the settings. So you push and hold settings. It goes to units. Push it again until you find brightness. Push and hold. And then you can adjust it. See, it's at negative four. Now it's getting brighter. Now that's the brightest. You can see my big orange line. So I'm just gonna go to minus four, which is the lowest. And it's a bit less, but still present. 